Hello again. Now uh, we have a climate change that's been in the news recently because of COP27. But the reality is it is having a growing impact on the African uh, continent, hitting the most vulnerable the hardest and contributing to food insecurity and population displacement, among others. The continent finds itself in a unique position as it's responsible for only 3 to 7 percent of global greenhouse gas emissions. Well, let's discuss the situation of uh, climate change impact on our continent with Joseph Asunka. He's the CEO of the Afrobarometer. Joseph, good afternoon. Welcome uh, to today here on ENCA. Thank you very much uh, for your time. You, as Afrobarometer, have been, uh, have been monitoring issues around climate change on our continent at a high level. What are, what are you seeing? Because generally when you mention the words climate change, people just switch off because it's like it's something that's still coming in the future. Right, yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's really a great pleasure to be with you this afternoon and it's good to be talking about climate change in this time. Um, we do have information about climate change and how it's impacting, impacting people across the continent. And we do so because Afrobarometer is a public attitude survey. We conduct surveys in about 35 countries, now going into about 40 countries on the continent. And what we normally do is ask you know, ordinary citizens their experiences on many issues from governance, the economy, society, and lots of other issues. And climate change has become more topical now because we're beginning to see its effects. We have seen the effects of floods across the continent. We've seen droughts becoming more and more severe. And these are things that people are experiencing in their daily lives. Yeah, and are people, are uh, people making the link, sorry, just are people making the link between that reality you're, you're speaking about and these two words, climate change? Right. So we increasingly are seeing that people are making a link. And when we ask people, first of all, we usually ask people whether they or not they have heard about climate change. And for those who tell us that they have heard about climate change, it is those people who actually have been able to make the direct link between what they are experiencing and the, the concept climate change. So among those who say they know about climate change and they have heard about climate change, and of course, across the continent, climate change awareness is not as high, but it is pretty high in some countries. But averagely across the continent, about half of the continent's population has told us that they are aware of climate change. They've heard about it. And among those who have heard about it, we have lots of them saying that it's making life much more difficult for them. And they experience it in different ways when there are floods or when there's drought. This is how they see climate change actually manifesting in their own lives. Yeah, where, where is the awareness the highest? Where are you finding, if you could break it down for us uh, in terms of your research as Afrobarometer, are you finding that it differs from country to country or there's a group of countries that have really have the highest awareness? <laughs> And so the awareness is actually, it varies um, mostly in the more temperate places on the continent, awareness is much higher. And I think awareness is much higher there because when there's any change in the environment, when there's any change in climate, then they tend to feel the impact more. So for example, in the East Africa region where the temperature, the climate is much more temperate, when there's a drought or there's flood, that is more immediately you know, felt. But then when it comes to, you know, places like Western Africa, where climate, I mean, the environment is much more extreme, there's much more drought and there's more frequent um, heats, uh, the levels of heat is much, much, much higher. Then we, people's uh, tendency to link what they're experiencing to climate change is much lower. So yes, in the East Africa region, we see that awareness is much more, much higher than it is in the West Africa region. Yeah, and, and, and what are people's attitudes towards what can be done? Are they satisfied with what their governments are, are trying to do? Right, so first of all, when we ask us, like, uh, lots of people on the continent, for those who we have surveyed in the last round, where we have data from 20 countries, most people are really not satisfied with the way their governments are handling climate change. I think one thing I should add here is, because they are not satisfied with the way the governments are handling climate change, there is a lot of call to action by citizens to their governments that they think their governments need to take more action on climate change. 
and that they as citizens are willing to join governments in the uh, fight against climate change. So if we look across the continent, more and more people see climate change and the fight against climate change as a shared responsibility between governments and citizens. It is only in a few countries where we see a disparity. So for example, in Nigeria, citizens tend to take and you know, put the um, the responsibility for fighting climate change much more closer to government than citizens. And then in Tunisia, we see that citizens tend to see the developed world as being the ones who should be responsible for fighting climate change and not them. But on average across the continent, most citizens see the fight against corruption as a shared responsibility between themselves and their government. Yeah, this, this, this latest study you've done on 20 countries, you say, uh, I don't know what are your plans uh, 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 for the future, but I'm just wanting to break it down demographically because at least here in South Africa, rural households are largely headed by women who work the land. And I would guess in large parts of rural Africa, you'd find the same as men leave and migrate to look for jobs in the urban areas. Women are left alone to bear the brunt of climate change. Did, did you try and find out from, 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 uh, from a, a gender perspective, how is climate change viewed? Right, so in terms of the, the gender dynamics, there is a slight difference in gender in our experiences, even though for the 20 countries that we've surveyed, we haven't seen like a major you know, difference between um, the, the gender disparity. What we tend to see is the, the rural urban uh, breakdown, where you see in largely in rural areas, there is a much more you know, experience of in some of the manifestations of climate change, and you tend to see rural folks explain or describing their experiences with how climate change actually manifests. And even though if they don't link it to climate change, the manifestation of it is what they, they can tell us. So talking about you know, the shortening of um, when it comes to seasons, different seasons, whether it is in the rainy season, you know, there's a rainy season that the amount of rain they get gets much shorter and the, the experience of droughts get much, much, much more severe. So you do get that sentiment from rural areas much more than you get in the urban areas. But when it comes to gender dynamics, we don't see the, the big, a big difference yet. But as you okay. said, for our future plans, the surveys are currently ongoing and we're going to cover about 40 countries in this round. So by the end of this year, we'll have data for all the 40 countries that we can put together and do a more systematic analysis across the whole continent. Yeah, I, I, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I would also think it might be useful for your next survey as Afrobarometer to also ask about how people see us in the media covering issues around uh, climate change, because it's more than just about the weather. Certainly. And of course, you know, it is how people's awareness of climate change in particular, because I do think that even though we have about half of the continents in our population being aware of climate change, it is the way the media covers it that can bring both the, the awareness and also the spirit of seeing the fight against climate change as a shared responsibility. And of course, the one deeper thing I want to mention here is, you know, even though citizens see climate change, of course, they experience climate change in their daily lives, they want their governments to take action. And in some cases, they actually tell us that even if governments are going to take action, that would cause some harm to their economies or maybe cause some job losses. They are willing to accept that if governments will take the necessary actions to fight climate change. And I think this is something, a relevant data point for, for us and for governments, because often when you want to take difficult decisions or make difficult decisions under these circumstances, the fear is always what will be the reaction of the public. But we do think that, you know, generally speaking, people are willing to accept hard choices by governments if it is truly for the fighting against climate change. Thank you very much for your time and insights about your latest survey there as Afrobarometer on what uh, Africans on the ground are experiencing and their attitudes towards uh, climate change.